Most non-state media outlets in Russia have been banned, but not Zagrad TV, which blends just the kind of patriotic, conservative, orthodox values which underpin Putin's regime. The Pope has criticized what is happening in Ukraine. Its wealthy founder, Konstantin Malofeyev, has been under US and EU sanctions since 2014 for supposedly funding the separatists in Donbass. I can easily survive with Western sanctions. Unashamedly imperialist, he's also called Russia's offensive in Ukraine a holy war, and he promotes all the main talking points of the Kremlin's propaganda. So where does this end? This special military operation. You said it would be a matter of days. It's when been much longer than that. When you would stop to support Nazis, when you in Britain would uh, stop to support Nazi regime in Kiev. Obviously, the UK and I am not the British government, but the UK would say we do not support uh, Nazis in Ukraine. It is like the tiny number of them, it and is also lie. the Kiev regime is not a Nazi regime. So no, it's not obviously. It is obviously only for you and for Western propaganda. So Russia will keep fighting in Ukraine until the flow of weapons stops? This is part of our territory. We are divided people. And we were divided in 1991, as Germans were divided after the war. Uh, when we were defeated in Cold War, we were divided for Russian Federation and Ukraine. But we are one people. We have one history. We have one blood. We are the family. The channel is watched mostly by the Orthodox faithful, but it's useful for the Kremlin. A new branch just opened in Kherson, Ukraine, after Russian forces occupied the city and took over its airwaves. Zagreb TV is a good illustration of the Christian nationalism that Vladimir Putin has made a central part of his rule. This notion of a Russian world where Belarus and Ukraine aren't sovereign entities at all, a political idea which the Russian Orthodox Church and its patriarch Kirill have pushed with religious fervor. <laughs> Patriarch's support for the war effort has resulted in calls for the Russian Orthodox Church to be expelled from the World Council of Churches. And despite the threat of prosecution, even some priests within Russia are speaking out. Patriarch предложил во всех храмах русской церкви читать молитву о войне на Украине, о мире. И все это было бы хорошо, если бы не одно обстоятельство. В тексте этой молитвы сказано что народ Украины страдает из-за того, что иноплеменные какие-то враги развязали эту войну. То есть это перевод на церковный язык тезиса кремлевской пропаганды о том, что это НАТО во всем виновата. Понимаете? И когда вот эту политику уже в храме в молитву, не в проповедь даже, а в молитву вставляют, ну я не знаю, куда еще идти. Outside the Kremlin, there's a giant statue to Saint Vladimir, the 10th century leader who united the peoples of Ukraine, Belarus and Russia under the rule of Kiev and Rus and converted them to Christianity in Kiev. It seems pretty obvious why Putin built it here. But his imperialist dreams so far have resulted in the biggest split in the Orthodox Church in a thousand years. And the prayers of the faithful for peace this Easter hostage to brutal politics.